is easy to apply because it has a thinner upward look right there. You see, it kind of gives you the ability to gauge where you want it. So, it's a little bit, a tiny dab of glue is all we need right there. We'll be able to glue the tips right on. And because the tip's a little bit thinner, it should ideally just apply very easily. It's thinner, so it doesn't flex. Check angles. It flexes and it bounces back out, you know? This comes from clear and, um, and natural. I like using natural unless I, I don't every time use clear is when I, I do encapsulation or something like that. But generally natural is the way to go because it takes on the um, the naturalness of the tip better. So I had too much glue there. It takes a bit longer to glue. Cause more glue means it just takes longer for it to, to dry. See how this tip has a nice taper look already. It, it's kind of slightly coffin, but that means that when you do your application, your, if you want taper, you, the, you can fill it in with your application. And if you want a coffin, you just file it in a little bit. So that's the reason why I like these tips. And I do prefer the natural curved tips over the straight tips sometimes because it's very easy to work with to create apex, the natural apex. If you were to do a uh, medium nail, we're going to be cutting this down a lot, you're going to lose a lot of the curve and it's going to be nice and natural for you. See that? And it's not that curvy. If you notice, and if you are going to cut this down, it's actually going to take away from the curve. So a nice medium set would be like almost like a straight tip, a very, very nice look, a very clean look. You don't have to spend a lot of time um, building apex and all that stuff because that's a nice curve to it. So it gives a natural curvature. And a lot of clients actually like a slight curve. They don't like everything just straight out. So it's up to your clients. So you definitely make sure you have all the tips available. See? Very easy to apply for those guys that have issues with the like the beginning phase like this. It takes me about five minutes for the tips on, if not faster if I'm not living, but um, generally just popping them on, make sure everything's straight. And there you go. What? Oh, you got glue stuff. I don't have it. I need one small drop of glue, that's it. A lot of times people use too much glue. More glue means it takes longer to dry. Takes longer to attach, okay? <clears throat> Gluing is the one thing that is less is not, and more, more is not better, okay? Less is more when it comes to glue. Then look, just one drop in the middle, and you'll be able to press this tip down, and it just comes right to the side. And boom. Fairly easy, right? We have no issues with the nails gluing down to the nail bed at all. This part is supposed to be easy, guys. Don't make it harder for yourself by putting too much glue, causing you to sit there and wait for it to dry, and it won't dry, and it keeps popping off, slipping off, frustrated. I understand that frustration. That's why I had these tips made the way they are made. These are the natural curve, natural tips. They call them natural tips. When you see see the word natural tips, you know that it has a slight curve. So we don't have to say it's natural curve tips or something like that. So it's just natural. And they actually look really nice, guys. Once I finish this set, you guys see like it's like a nice curvature. Um, I'm gonna cut this down a slightly a little bit, but not too much. But as you can see, how natural they look. So there you go. You can get these at the naildeadshop.com. Right here, this is called the natural tips. And it comes in natural, and it come, and the, the clear ones are natural clear. So in case you guys wanna do like an encapsulation or something like that, you can do that with the clear tip. You get a pair of scissors, 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 scissors. And I'm just gonna move this a little bit. I'm gonna just cut slightly, just at the tip. There. Just shorten them a little bit. And this will take away a little bit of the curve, which is fine with me. You guys notice how I didn't cut the pinky? Because the pinky is always going to be the smallest nail. So you don't want to cut those yet until you finish measuring these up. Make sure these are all the same length. Middle finger is a little bit longer. One more, shorter. Mm -hmm. There we go. So we're going to long length. Everything is matched up. See how the pinky, even though I cut now, the pinky is the same length. 
If you cut the pinky, it's not gonna be the same length. The pinky's always the smallest finger. I always see uh, a lot of nail techs have a set and the pinky's always so small compared to everything else. That's why you don't cut the pinky because it's such a small finger. So you wanna leave the tip that last in case you don't have to, probably don't have to cut it at all, okay? Where's everybody watching from? Thank you for the shares. I appreciate that, guys. <clears throat> for the thumb? Yeah, for, uh, for all of them. All of them? Yeah, a little shorter. You're using a little long, you longer than this. What happened to you? You got scared? No. See, now I have to cut the pinky down a little bit. But yeah. So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that hand is all gonna be the same length. I'm just gonna go ahead and just eyeball this first. And then I'm gonna go through and match everything up. So make sure both hands are the same length. Boom. I don't wanna cut this, the second hand too short, then I have to go back through and re cut everything down, okay? Eyeball it, give yourself some room for air. Ooh, that one was just perfect, wow, I really, Cuticle to cuticle is how you measure the length. Okay, because not every nail bed is the same length. And where is everybody watching from? I'm trying to see where to put my next class here. We've got a master class coming up. San Jose class, only class left. I'm leaving for Vegas this weekend. If you're in the San Jose area or close to there, you want to join a two-day workshop, learn some trending designs, that's going to be so nice. Okay, so that's it, guys. Now, just some primer. <laughs> and the natural nail bed. Now I'm gonna show you guys the curvature again. Because remember, we cut that down, right? <laughs> now the curve is not as much more. I love these tips, I'm telling you guys. Like, if you are doing medium to medium short nails, get these tips. It's gonna save your life. Look, it's more tapered now, you see that? See how tapered it is? It's not wide. And look at the curvature. Look at that natural curvature. Not too curvy, right? So I'm gonna use a ch I'm gonna use Chisel's American White. It's not like a chalky white, but it's actually pretty white. So <laughs> we're gonna go with that today. Usually I, I would use a um I would use my wave gel, but wave gel didn't give me a white this time around. So. A lot of you guys have been purchasing a lot from Wave Chuck. Hope you guys are liking their products. I've been using my 16 Klinsky. Oh, no, my 14. Do you see how I've trained it to where, where it just stays in shape? Mm. Okay, Missouri. Uh uh, the Peach State. All right, UK. I love my UK, um, my um, UK followers. I can't wait to go international with a class. So I'm just gonna do a two bead. Remember, this is a nicely slight curved tip, so we don't we have a natural ability to it. Bringing the sides, and this is my monomer. And monomers are back in stock. Um, I'm able to get. I will be trying to get the 32 ounce. I know a lot of you guys have been really, really, really wanting a bigger size. So the best I can do is 32 ounces, double the 16 ounce size. Um, you guys, and the monomer has been such a big hit. Thank you for all the support. And um, hopefully you guys are really enjoying the monomer and you know, it's helping out with your work. You see how my, this is using my monomer. I use my monomer with every powder I use. It's universal, y'all. Works with chisel, wave gel, pretty much Valentino. Anything you have in your arsenal, my monomer is medium setting. Gives you that nice ability to mold the powder. Gives you time to work with it. <clears throat> Add too much there, but it's fine. I'm gonna be able to reposition the bead. And just clean up the cuticle area with my crimp brush here. Like that. 
Nice and flush. So later I will do less work later, okay? And there you go. You have a nice apex. A natural apex, really. Look at that. Beautiful apex. Just from here, curve out to the base of the nail. I can use a little bit more powder in the base, but later I'll buff and file this and it'll be nice and easy. easy. No problem at all. Shapes there. Oh, thank you, Tracy Kelly. Scotland, oof. I have to come over to UK for a class in the future once everything's settled down. It's my first beat. So my monomer is a three second rule. It gives you three seconds to let the powder marble. See that? It keeps the powder nice and medium. You think it's dry, but if you put light pressure, you'll be able to work it and move it. Usually white powder, black powder, anything with high pigment will dry a little bit slower. But this white powder actually dry a little bit faster. My studio is a little warm, but there you go. So once you are able to use your brush, look at that taper. Oh my goodness. See that? The shape is already there, everybody. So I'm gonna be careful with this. I'm gonna pick up less powder than I did before. See that? One, two, three. Boom, it marbles, right? <laughs> Application is so important, everybody. It helps you makes your life so much easier. This is why I teach application in any of my courses. Um, Tino and Vina, amazing nail techs. But they're like, you know what, John, you do the application portion. Because I really specialize in application. I'm like, come on, let's be real. That's just beautiful, right? The understanding, control of the pot, and the timing is very important. The way I manipulate acrylic, I like that. You use the word manipulation because that's what it's about. When you do acrylics, you're manipulating, okay? You're not forcing, you're not making the acrylic, you know, beat it down. A lot of people, they want to make the acrylic work for them, but you gotta manipulate. You gotta make sure that the acrylic wants to work for you. You can't force it. Very gentle. I use my whole brush. My brush is a nice Kalinsky brush. It's a very high quality brush. So it won't get, you see the acrylic won't get stuck to it. I'm here brushing and brushing and brushing. No, because it only gets stuck to it if I have other acrylic on my brush. This allows me to be able to work with acrylic without cleaning my brush. That's why it's very important to have a high quality brush in your arsenal. A lot of times you guys have brushes that are maybe $10 or something really cheap and they're like synthetic, which is plastic bristles and not Kalinsky hair like this one. Yes, you can get it for cheaper, but it's gonna make it work a lot harder. And a brush is very important, investment. A lot of people that have my brushes that have it for years. To take care of it. Is that no acrylic? One, two, three. Make sure I get the flush the cuticle area. And blend this bead into it. Simple as that. This is timing, understanding how long I have to work with the acrylic. When do I start working with it? When do I start moving it? Very important. This is with experience. And over time, you guys will have the same. The more you work, the more you do it. The more you'll be able to get that understanding and you'll be able to do flawless application just like this. I promise you. Because the, the nail art brushes are the same bristle, uh, the same quality as my um, uh, acrylic brushes. You see how I'm using the whole brush? The whole brush. I'm not tapping, I'm not doing any of that. Da, 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 I'm using my whole brush. This is what the word brush is to brush through. You know, it's not free to tap for you to put. A manipulation like you see a lot of people do application where they're just like you know trying to uh like be soft with it trying to you know uh, manipulate it as in like you know 
they feel like they don't have control over it. I don't like that. I like to have control over my acrylic on my brush. I want to be able to use my brush, and when I when I move this acrylic, it's gonna move where I want it. It's gonna move how I want it. I don't want to do any motion where it feels like I'm losing control of it. That I'm just trying to, you know, I'm in a really tough situation, tough spot. Isn't that everything I do has every motion, every movement has a, a means to it. It does something. When I do this, it means I want to shape my acrylic. When I do this, I want to shape my acrylic. When I do this, I want to smooth out my acrylic. I'm not doing anything that's a waste, you know? Everything I do when I do application, it has a means to it. Not wasteful. I don't mind showing you guys how I do application because yes, you see it, you know you can do it. That's my students in class, they, they learn my technique. Sometimes the simplest things, when I see them, how they hold the brush or how they work, and I make that adjustment, oh my gosh, I would never have been able to do this if I kept watching your videos. Yes, it's the difference. Is that consistency? When I say consistency, it means that every time you do it, it's the same. Every time you do it, it's the same. You know why? Because you're using the same technique consistently. Effortless? I wouldn't say effortless, but um, I'm using uh, American by, um, by Chisel. But any, any powder that you use with my monomer will come out like this. Because my monitor is very universal. Chisel is a great product. Also, Wave Gel is a great product. I'm going to start using more Wave Gel for you guys in the future. Well, I am starting right now, but I have a bunch of other colors I have to go look through. You see the brush motion? My brush, I can brush like this, and boom. Clean as a baby's bottom. But how is it that every time you guys use your brushes, the moment you put the bead down, you have acrylic stuck to it? You got to really reflect on your brush, your brush quality. Take care of your brush also. If you have acrylic stuck in your brush already, it's going to have that. And I appreciate you guys follow my Instagram. It's pinned right there below. Um, and for those of you guys that use my, my products, um, tag now that shop to get reposted. I have my, I'm a, my I know that shop has an Instagram also where all the products are posted and stuff like that. I'm gonna start focusing more on that in the future. I'm gonna start right now actually um, because I can't have everything on, on my main page now that studios, but I'm gonna make sure I'm able to post, repost anybody's work. Guys, this is what you try to achieve right here. Structure, apex. In two beads, I created apex and structure for the nails. How do you buy in <laughs> SA? I don't know where SA is. South America? I don't know. We don't ship internationally. I'm sorry. And I apologize. That's one thing that is really tough for us right now. We cannot ship internationally. for movements everything has means a lot of you guys say I make it look effortlessly it's because of the technique I use I've been doing this for like years 10 years the same technique over and over I'm gonna refine this application technique down I'm, I'm gonna master have that level of mastery where I understand everything about my movements when I work something you guys will definitely develop on your own also years from now your skill level is gonna be higher than it is when you started I guarantee you no one stays the more you work it doesn't matter the more you work the more consistent you become everybody's so worried about speed I don't want you guys to be faster I want you guys to be more efficient think about that for a second a play on words isn't it yes Mentally, if you think about going faster, you're going to lose quality. But if you think about being more efficient, you're going to be faster and you're going to have better quality of work. I guarantee you. I 
That's why I'm trying to replace the word speed with efficiency with a lot of nail techs now that are coming in this industry. <clears throat> South Africa? Yeah, it's unfortunately, like, um, you guys have to have some kind of PO boss or something. You have to, because we don't ship internationally. Not a lot of times it's ship internationally, unfortunately. You see how I always bring the powder to the middle? I don't move it until I'm ready. I have everything in position to move. side here I'm gonna push this over mold it before any excess you have will probably we have to use a hand filer I try to eliminate the hand filer as much as possible because I don't like using the hand filer for shaping I use my acrylic brush for shaping that's my favorite tool to shape for those of you guys that ask me about shaping yes my acrylic brush is my favorite tool to I use for shaping because there's nothing better to shape than with your acrylic brush When the acrylic is at a consistency for you to work with it, that's when you shape. Shape at this phase first and use the hand filer to make your shape more crisp. That's it. Don't be dependent on the hand filer to make your shape. Because when you, what's going to happen is you're going to depend on that. Your mental, your mind's going to be like, oh, you know what? I can do my application a little bumpy. It doesn't have to be smooth, perfect, because I can use my hand filer later, right? No, not right. Add a little bit more monomer. My monomer is getting a little bit dingy. Do you offer soak off to your clients? Yes, I do. Yeah, my clients, she just got to soak off while she got her pedicure. <laughs> Usually my clients, when they do soak off, they come in a little bit earlier, they get their pedicures, and they get the nails soaked off. I offer every service. I do fills, I do soak offs, everything. I'm not gonna limit myself from money. That's, well, I mean, I don't, I don't need to, but I have a lot of clientele. But like, if you're starting off as a nail tech, you don't limit yourself off with money. I don't do soak offs. I don't, I don't do short nails. I don't do, uh, you know, gel polish. Oh, girl, you need when you start your career off, you can't be picky and choosy. You need to, if you gotta sit there and soak it off just to get that client. Yes, get that client, get that bag first. Later on, when you have a lot of clientele, then you can be like, okay, you know, I, I don't have time to do all this, so I can, you know, pick and choose. I see a lot of nail techs complain that they, they don't do this and they don't do that, and then they go and post, I don't, there's not enough clients, you know, I'm not, I'm not busy enough, I'm not booked and busy. Well, you're not booked and busy because when I re read your policy, you're making your clients jump through loops just to get sit in with you. Don't be picky and choosy in the beginning of your career. You know, you got to work your way up to be that level so you can pick and choose your clients. You need those clients, you know why? Those are the hands-on. You need to be able to do nails every day, five, six sets a day in the beginning of your career. Gets you that consistency as you can build techniques like this. When I was, you know, starting out, I did 10, 20 sets a day. Short nail, long nail, I don't care what it is. Fills or repair, if it can get me to start doing an application, I'm gonna do it. I do repairs all the time. Clients will come in, I need a nail repair. Everybody else in the shop like, oh no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do a repair. I'm like, come here. Sat there, do a quick five, 10 minute repair. Make that nail look amazing. And the client's gonna come back. And who they're gonna ask for? Me. Build a client right there. They see my work compared to the work that on all nine fingers. When they see your one nail look better than the nine fingers they got done wherever they got done, they're gonna come back to you. That's why I, how I built my clientele through repairs, a lot of repairs. Anytime someone get, wants to repair, send them my way. It takes me five, 10 minutes, nothing at all. Build a lifelong client. Working over other people's work. Some people say, I don't wanna work other people's work. I would love working over other people's work. Sometimes, if it's, if it's bad, I soak off. <laughs> I offer soak offs. Say, so, hey, you know what? There's nothing I can do about this, but you know, 
the moment you can make your nails look better than the other person's, they'll come back. That's why I'm successful, thank you. How do I promote myself? Um, actually, it's easier for me because I worked at nail salons. I know it's a lot tougher for a lot of you guys that are stay at home. I really don't have any experience with that. Other than the fact that um, a lot of it's off my Instagram. Clients will see my work. Um, they'll be referred word of mouth and they'll, they'll, they'll come. But um, that's why I, I, my main goal is to get everybody salon ready. As in, I want you guys to be working in salons. I want nail techs to start getting licensing. Even if you don't have a license right now and you're working, start working toward getting one. Get in a salon, get some team building experiences. I'm um, in a salon, you don't have to build, you don't have to worry about getting clients. The salon gets the clients for you. You have a physical location, there's walk ins, when it's your turn, you work. So, a lot of nail techs that are coming out of this industry, they really need that because you can't, it's tough building clients up by yourself. I know it. Um, so, yeah, you, I want to make sure that you guys are salon ready so that if you guys want to do work in a salon, you guys know how to and you know what to do and how to, how to get it done. Um, I've been working with a lot of nail academies and having a salon ready course included into the nail academy course where after the students graduate get their license they'll have a two days with me where i get them ready for the the world because i'm a salon owner i know what i look for when i look for a nail tech and i know what is needed in a salon so i'm able to get them prepared so when they, they do, if they do choose to open their own salon or even um work at a salon they'll know how to get themselves in you know a little bit of prior knowledge there I must admit, my applicant was very smooth this set. Some days you just feel it, right, y'all? Look at that. Application alone, guys. Application alone. Should be nice and crisp like that. And of course, my brush, I'm gonna check it. If you feather through, I call it the feather technique. You see there's acrylic in here? This acrylic is nothing, but if you leave it, it's going to dry up. So you got to get it into the monomer and clean it out. Until when you feather through your brush and you feel no acrylic like that, boom. You know there's no acrylic in there. Reshape from where you crimp a good brush and take care of it. This brush will last me another six months, seven months. One of the worst things I, I see happen is that nail techs will get their license and they come out and they just confuse what they, they're not ready. There's so much they didn't teach you in nail school to get you ready for all the stuff that we're doing out here in you know in the world of nails, right? Now the nail industry is always growing so fast and a lot of nail techs they run into issues where they, they, they they're just not ready for it. And they come in and they, they feel like they're they're drowning. I don't want I don't want that to happen to anybody. I want you to be successful. So yes, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm a big advocate for um, now uh, for licensing, and I will create a nice, a like kind of a trend where I'll be able to prepare the, these students, these uh, nail techs, to be ready for the outside world. And that's how I'm gonna leave my mark behind. How I'm gonna be remembered in this nail industry. I always wanna be. I wanna leave some kind of legacy behind, guys. And I'm going to start this off and hopefully it will pick up and a lot of people will do it too. And it will make our industry stronger, our nail techs stronger. Too many nail techs get chewed up and eat up and spat out because they're not ready. They don't have the right information to start their career off. You and your sensitive skin. I does not even worn out too. I gotta be careful with your skin is so sensitive. I have somebody cut their skin with a hand filer. You see how this quick this shaping is? That's all you need to do. And that's my shape. Nice and taper. I don't spend a lot of time with my hand filer because my shaping, like I said earlier, was done with my acrylic brush. The hand filer's only job is to make it more crisp. If I were to sit here for 10 minutes on one finger and, and consistently file, 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 what's gonna happen? The shape's gonna, you're gonna lose the shape, guys. The shape's gonna go away. You can always remove acrylic, but you can't always add back acrylic back on, okay? So be careful. A lot of you guys are over filing. Yes, it's a thing. 
you're not it's not because you're you, it's not because you don't know how to shape. You're overshaping. You're taking too much off, so your shape is lost. What's the best liquid? What's the best acrylic liquid? You have to go with my liquid. I'm telling you. My monomer is the medium setting, universal monomer. works for everything. It's very good. Everybody that uses it, all my students that use it, are obsessed with it. It's consistently out of stock, so if you can grab one right now before I restock, grab it. It's always out of stock. Hey, Dagnan, how are you? Smooth to New Bear, work from home. What's your uh, recommendation on new plants? Um, you, you, anytime you move to a new area, um, I would always recommend seeing what the, what the nail techs in the areas are doing. And just quickly hashtag Birmingham nail techs, hashtag Detroit nail tech, and check out their work. And then, you know, see what kind of clientele are, are what the clients are getting in that area, you know. Um, check out the salons. Go to the salon, get a pedicure. See the traffic in the area, you know. And then you'll see uh, how the area is. But usually if you're a stay-at-home tech, you really got to have your own niche. As in something unique about yourself that will stand out. Okay? Because if you don't have that uniqueness, it has to be something. Either you can be specializing in gel polish. I always recommend doing the, do those short sets, y'all. Like, come on, short, medium sets, good, good structure, good shaping. Money in the bank. You guys see that? Thickness, side profile. Yep, I don't have to do a lot of filing. You're right, Paige. I don't. This is what I teach in my classes. And the students, when when you're watching me, it's completely different. Every time I, I, I see a student that always watches me and they're, and they're in the class and they're doing my technique, and they're like, I can't get it down. And I'm like, this is why. And this is why I love in-person classes because there's certain things I can't help you over the screen. I don't do online classes for that reason. I like the interaction. I like to be there with the students. I can't see what I can't wait to see what West Coast has in store. I mean, our Denver class was amazing. Um, Vegas class this week coming up, and then we have San Jose. San Jose, calling on San Jose nail techs or surrounding area. Can't wait to see what. The, then we'll be back to West Coast, East Coast for our master classes, where we're going to be focusing on designs, hardcore designs, new products. I realized something, there's some products that a lot of <laughs> people have never even seen or used before. That's crazy. So that's what we try to teach. Oop. Look how sensitive your skin is. Especially after you just got soaked off, so it's probably more sensitive. You set this a quick back and forth, switch sides. I'm not gonna stay too long. My shape is already there. I'm always making it crisp. If you're spending more than 20 minutes doing shaping, you're doing something wrong. No, you're not doing something wrong. You're just overdoing it. How about that? Step away from it and come back to it later. You never know. Nice taper shape. This is from the tips too. I didn't have to cut or file the tips, guys. Remember? Well, I, I cut the tips, but I didn't have to um, cut the sides or I didn't have to sh shape with a hand filer. These are the tips the way it is. I used my acrylic brush to give me my shape, but that's pretty much it. The tips are actually a very nice tip. This is why I tell you guys I love using natural tips when I ever get a chance. Do a taper set, and it's not as too long, and I'll pop these on. Look at that. Let me show you guys what's up. All two being, look at that. Same structure, right? There's something to be proud of. You'll reach that level, I guarantee you. Here we go, my favorite drill bit. Oh, not this one. 
this is my five and one. This is different. You probably have a five and one. Not like this though. The way it's cut is different, okay? Your mom is already sold out. I'm so sorry. It should be restocked by next week. I'm sorry. Um, check the 16 ounce. The 8 ounce is sold out. Check the 16 ounce. Gotta be careful with this one. Remember, I kind of nicked her a little bit earlier, so... I'm gonna be careful around that. I'm gonna clean all my tools afterwards. Is her skin is so sensitive. It's dry. I'm gonna put some... My acrylic is so smooth, I don't need to mess with it too much. See how smooth that is? I'm just gonna do a hand filing and buffing. My main goal is to get this cuticle area nice and flush. This is where the lifts come from, guys. So I guess I have lifting. This is it. As you can see, I only put primer on my nails. I don't put any extra fancy stuff. Fancy, fancy stuff, right? The primer. And this 501, I'm able to run through the whole nail if I wanted to. But I gotta be careful, this is a carbide bit, meaning that it's gonna eat into the acrylic. Smoothing my acrylic, I gotta be very light handed. If I'm heavy handed, it's gonna eat into the smoothness and I have to go through and do more work for myself. You see? I'm just gonna use this to clean up the sides a little bit. I'm gonna go through and do this one too, just real quick. I don't have to hand file it later. I had a little bit of issue with the pinky in the earlier earlier phase, remember? So I'm gonna go through and just drill it out. I do circular motion because that's how my drill bit works. It works circular, okay? Yeah. There we go. Same thing over and over. My thickness is about a card a card, a card a card and a half thickness. Look, around the cuticle area, flush it to the natural nail. Circular motion is that. I'm right handed, so I go right to left. If you're left handed, you'll be in reverse, you'll be going left to right. If you're left handed, I mean. <laughs> there I say left handed. See that? You need to get the sides, okay? Because the sides can't just stick up. It's, 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 it has a curve. It's a curvature. I'll show you the side, the front profile in a second. Why? What I mean by curvature it has to have a curve to it. You can't have flatness. Flatness is not strong. You have to have a curvature. That gives it a strong arch. Yeah, see that like when people build bridges, the Romans built bridges, they built arches underneath to create, give it strength, right? Because the arch will be able to take on more uh, pressure and tension than something that's flat, right? Even nails can go back to ancient architecture. That's why you get that C curve. People say C curve are more stronger. An arch, an arch. It's more stronger than a flat nail, okay? I didn't use a C-curve tip. I built this. I built this from my natural tip. This From my application, I create the C-curve. You guys see me use C-curve tip? No. So you don't have to use C-curve tips per se. You can also have it with just using this. A lot of people like more curvature, fine, use a secret tip. But this is just a natural nail, a natural curve. Yeah, 
I'm going in circular motion from the side, curvature, creating that nice curve. Very easy, right? Not a lot of work. Any set you do should be run around less than an hour just to set itself. I honestly truly think that you should never be doing a set over an hour. I mean, like finishing the application and filing. And once you get that mastery level down, you'll be able to finish any set in less than an hour. Then all the extras, stones, designs, all that stuff will come out later. So beautiful. I love this. This is how a structured nail looks. This means this nail is not going to break now. Unless there's some really intense trauma, that nail ain't going to break. Yeah, effortlessly done. Because it is required less. The way I work, I really don't <laughs> use that much effort. I do a lot of my work through my applications and later on I can just breeze through this part so I don't have to worry about drilling down all this bulk. No, it's already smooth. So I'm just smoothing it out. I when I, when, you know, I want to create more work for myself. I want to create, make my job easier. Work smarter, not harder. Later on, I'm gonna draw some gel French on this. Has some glitter tips. It's gonna look so nice. <laughs> For a lot of you guys, honestly, this level of mastery is not too far off. Because you guys have so much at your disposal, education wise. You've got me, you've got YouTube, Instagram, you've got every social media network in practice, and you got all these products. Let's be honest, these products were not available when I started doing nails 10, 15 years ago. <laughs> a 5 in 1 bit? Get the hell out of here. We didn't have that shit. We didn't even know what that was. Uh, EMA monomer? No. This color powder? No. We're still using Tammy Taylor and MMA. Shit dries up so fast. You don't have time to even do live streams. Yeah, nice and smooth. I know you guys, sometimes I, I bring up stories of 10 nails 15 years ago. You're just like, I remember going to the nail salon with my, my grandma, my auntie, or my mom. Y'all remember it, right? Airbrush, uh, white tips, or color. Regular color. And afterwards, I gotta use that Crisco can and spray it on you. Oh, don't worry, this helps it dry. Psych. That is a placebo. That gives you the, the illusion that's gonna dry. I had so many people who try to spray that on and just walk out and try to dig through their purse trying to find M&Ms like, and then come out, oh, my nail's messed up. Well, yeah, like, what the fuck? <laughs> that spray, like, miracle, ain't gonna super dry your nails. It just, you're spraying aerosol on it, so it just, <laughs> I still see that spray being used. Salons, a lot of salons stopped using it because people just messed up their nails and blamed in the salon. 
helps dry, not dry right away. We're so blessed to have gel polish now, y'all, and color powder. Ooh. Back then, clients would just get the nails done, sit there for like an hour before they leave. Or come back. I messed up a nail. Oh, did you now? I think the most cringy moments are when you bring the clients and like, I'll have like her purse, I have her keys, her kid, her groceries, and I'll bring her over to the drying station. I'm like, okay, just be careful going under that. And she goes under and hits her hands right away. And I'm just like, you didn't even let me finish the sentence. Just be careful going under the tip. Already messed up. Oh my goodness. So yeah, you guys had it lucky. This is the golden era of to be a nail, nail tech. Being a nail tech 10, 15 years ago, oof, no thank you. RPM, I'm using uh, about 11 RPM right now. Um, Because I'm really used to it. If you're not used to 11, you can start off at um, maybe at uh, 7 or 9. That's a good, good speed when you're drilling. And depending on your drill bit also. I use I can usually go a little bit quicker. You have the kids and the groceries. That's that's literally how it was. I got the kid on my back, and groceries, a purse on both sides. Hey right, ma'am. Put your hand under the table and just be careful. I think I bumped it. You think you did or did you did you did? Because I heard it, so I know you did. Y'all wouldn't be able to do it. I see the, the, the level of patience nail tech nowadays have. You guys wouldn't be able to do it. You guys would be cussing out these customers and fighting them in the parking lot. Or in the salon. So be blessed with color powder and gel polish that dries right away. Even with gel polish, they still be messing up. Think about regular polish, y'all. Oof. Wham, bam, no thank you, ma'am. That's what we look for, y'all. Structure. Then back then, nail slimes used to be like, if you mess up your nails, it's gonna, they're going to charge you like another polish change. That's how bad it got. Because it would just take us forever to get one client out the door. Because they're not careful. There we guys go. Nicely done. Structure. Shape. Thickness underneath, for those guys that like to see the thickness. About one credit card to one, one and a half credit card thickness. I'm gonna buff it real quick and make sure I don't mess with the shape, the edges, the corners. I'm just gonna buff underneath. Dang, my monomers are out of stock already. Jesus. Oh my goodness. Don't worry, they'll be back in stock next week, y'all. I'm moving my warehouse, I'm having more space, so I, I'm, I'm trying not to stock up too much. Okay, let's get one last look at the dusties. Dusties. All right, guys. Hey, right, wash your hands. So, for this design, I'll do a sugaring effect. Very simple technique. This is actually my last client of the week until I go to Vegas for my class with Tino and Nina. So I've been using this white glitter by ANC. Get some of this with some white gel polish. Uh, 
Hello, Kelly. How are you? How have you been? For those of you guys that are interested in the San Jose class, our last West Coast class, it's, uh, July 19th and 20th. Feel free to DM. I'm using a uh, 501 Sharp. Um, if you want the, we have to say I have the safety version also on my nowdashop.com. I want to answer a couple. <laughs> uh, Vegas is next week, uh, Kendra. Uh, it'll be Monday and Tuesday. Oh, I f Kendra and Raymond. Oh my God. Where have you been? I'm actually coming to Vegas next week. I think there's a seat left if you want it. DM me. It's kind of last minute, but I haven't seen you on the social media in so long. So what I'm going to do is where is I have a glass of wine ready for me. Thank you. How have you guys been? Been busy? I hope. So I'll use my um this is my striper brush. And I'm probably gonna have to use my flat. Yes. I'm gonna be creating a deep French. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the grid lines. So I have the same consistency in every nail. Start the same spot and the same spot. Should I have a nice... It's that same positioning everywhere I go. This is my striper brush, a very nice long brush I use for all of that. So now I'm gonna go through with my flat brush and I'm gonna brush in, just speed up the process a little bit. I just need to get this nice and coated so that it will attach the glitter onto it, okay? I'm just gonna go through and fill in all the negative spaces. And I'll go through and clean up the uh, smile line with my brush again. And the edges, of course. Remember, I don't, I don't really care about getting this too coated because I'm gonna cover up with glitter. So I just wanna get it right through. Get it nice and coated evenly on the surface area. through with my brush again. Make sure I get these corners nice and even. Smile line. Clean up my smile line. Make sure I get this nice all the way up in that corner there. Whatever is sticky is where I want it to be. That's where the filler is gonna attach to. So I'm not too worried about making this full coverage because there's no point because it, as long as it's sticky, the gel is sticky, the um, glitter is going to stick to it once I sprinkle it on there. But I do want to make sure my smile line is nice though. Fairly easy and actually fun design to do. Sugaring effect. Um, very popular during the fall, winter time when you do sweater nails. This is how the sweater nails 
once winter hits, you'll be see a lot, me do a lot of sweater nails. If you want to go to my Instagram and see, like, back in December and November, you see a lot of sweater nails. Oh, God, the sweater nail season is, is coming, guys. Winter's coming. Sweater nails, fall colors, all that is coming. I don't have to worry about coverage. If I was worried about coverage, I've been using a gel art paint. Gel art paint is very thick and it actually gives me better coverage, but it's not sticky. So I want it more sticky, so that's why I'm using a regular gel polish. Let me show you that nice coat. It's not mine. Okay. Now all I gotta do is. Sprinkle this on. Ooh. Make sure you get in all the gel area. You know what? I kind of fucked up because I didn't matte top coat this yet. I should have matte top coat it first, guys. Ah, it's okay. I just have to matte inside it, but the next hand I'll do it right. So yes, I messed up here. I jumped the gun. Now when we, when we clear, clear that, the gel's gonna cure and the glitter's gonna stick onto it. So if you wanna do it the right way, we will take a matte top coat. <laughs> now that's matte top coat, of course. Money back guarantee. We top coat it first. So then after we do that sugar effect, we don't have to do anything. So now I actually have to go through and matte in, in the interior to protect the, the nail. So you matte top coat first, okay? Before you do that. Clear top coat if you want the inside to be clear, but I like the whole matted look, so. So I'm just gonna use the matte top coat. This protects the, the nail. I mean, I could leave the other one just like that and be okay, but um, I don't want any like chemicals or something that's to hit the acrylic and get it dirty. So I wanna fill it in with a little bit of matte top coat also. Just takes me a little bit longer. This is actually a little quicker way of doing it because after you're done with the, the sprinkling of the, the glitter, you could just, you're done. You don't have to do anything else. Can you go ahead? Switch, yeah. So, when you're done with this, simply just dust it. And see, it only sticks. Ooh, 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 nice. I actually like this. <laughs> so, of course, I gotta go through, because my dumbass jumped the gun, matte this area. Just gotta be careful. Yeah, not too bad. Wedding nails, yes. That'd be a great wedding design. See how this is annoying to do. You gotta be careful not to go overdo it, but not too bad. So this is what the shiny version will look like. I actually really like the matte version. Go ahead, go ahead. So, same thing with this. First, I'm gonna draw through. Give me my grid lines. Same spot everywhere I do it, so I make sure I have the same consistency with the French. I'll go through with the grid lines first, then I'll fill it in later. It saves me time to have to go back through and do the same process over and over. Whenever you do designs, you gotta make sure you do steps and layers. It takes out a lot of the time. Sometimes a lot of you guys just wanna do one whole nail <laughs> and then move on to the next nail. I, that takes longer. Cause then you have to like, kinda like pick up a different tool. Sometimes you have to reuse a tool for a certain step. Get all that step done with, drop this tool. Bring up the next tool. Do that part. 
rinse and repeat. I'm gonna do this very thin because I don't want to lose my shape. If important, I don't want to lose my shape, okay? Well, thank you, Taisha Lewis. Drop that tool, go back up through with my liner to get my smile lines in the corners. Remember, I'm at this, I'm at this surface first, so after I'm done with this, I'm pretty much finished. Everything's already matted and sealed in. There you go. Just gonna go through and recreate these smile lines, make sure they're nice and smiley. Get these corners here because sometimes you miss a lot of the corners. And you want to do a shorter brush for this, this works well too. Maybe a detailer to be able to get you around these corners a little bit easier. I'm not trying to get this white to be full coverage because I want to be thin as possible. I just want it sticky. Sorry about that. My battery, my phone owns our battery, but we're about finished here, so we're we're gonna be okay. Clean up those corners. I want that deep French, so I'm trying to bring it all the way up there, all the way up. And there we have it, guys. Let's sprinkle this on and see the final look on both hands. I think this is a fairly easy design, actually a fun design to do, actually. You can do this a lot of different color combinations. It doesn't have to be with this white, but she wanted white on white on white, so. Well, a very fine glitter. I, don't, I wouldn't use chunky glitter, okay? Something fine, something, something that'll pop out. Chunky glitter would not work with this, so don't. Don't grab chunky glitter from like Joanne Fabrics or something like that and try to do this. It will not work. And this glitter is pretty easy to find. You can find it on Amazon. Just put glitter and then you look at the consistency, you'll see how fine it is. The reason why we don't need to have the white to be too much is because this glitter will actually cover up. It's a white glitter, so it has a little bit of white in it. It'll be able to cover up any of that inconsistency. And then we can just go ahead and tell her to cure that. Yep. And we're done. That reminds, ugh, you know what? I'm gonna pack up tomorrow to go to Vegas. I'm probably gonna have to come in tomorrow. I was gonna think about packing up right now, but. There you guys go. Let's hit her up with some cuticle oil because, oh God, Lord knows she needs it. So we did a soak off before this set, so. Let's bless her. See that? Ooh, that's cute, y'all. I'm about to do this design again. Mm -hmm. oh, look at that structure though. Come on fam, can't go wrong with that. 